Okay, so we are doing a very simple lab today um, to show how to compute distances and make uh, that uh, multiple dimensional scaling plots, MDS plots. So I'm going to start opening a file where I have already uh, saved the script. Um, all right, and then we're going to just um, go through the uh, commands very quickly. Okay, so here's the um, here's the script, and I am going to use R Studio again. And what I'm going to start doing is by uh, loading, setting the directory. So I'm in the right directory first. That's what this first line does. Uh, there we go. And now the next step, I am going to load a data set. And what does that data set have? Let's check. What did we just load? So we have E, uh, tab, and tissue. So E is an expression matrix, and tab um, has information on those tissues. So here's the tissue type and the type of tissue it is. Um, and then we also have um, the just a vector with the tissues. I'm going to show you what we have here. So there it is. We have 38 cerebellums, 34 colons, etc. Okay, now, so the first thing I am going to do is I'm going to just pick 50 uh, of these tissues and I'm going to stick so that we don't have uh, too many points in our plots. I'm going to just pick them at random. And then the next step, I'm simply going to take the distance of, I'm going to compute the distance of each column. So that's why there's a T here. The T transposes the matrix the E matrix so that um, the samples are in the rows and the function dist in R will compute the distances between each row of a matrix. So you have to be very careful when using distance because if you don't transpose it then you're going to be computing the distance between each gene and that's going to create a 20,000 by 20,000 matrix which will probably crash your laptop if you're using a laptop. And if you're using a powerful computer, it'll take a long time. All right, so let's just compute that distance. There it is, we're done. And now we have that distance. We can then use the hclust function to cluster them using hierarchical clustering. It's that simple. So we just run that. It's done. And we're going to plot the result of the hierarchical clustering, which you can do by simply calling the plot command and sending it the object that comes out of H clust. So we're going to add labels, right? The labels are going to be the third column of the tab index, which is the tissue. And that will make a dendrogram. Let's see what it looks like. There it is. All right, let me make it a little bigger so you can see it a little better. Oh, actually, we sent it the wrong um, column. We actually made the experiments, uh, the experiment ID. Uh, that's because I wanted to see if there's a batch effect, and we're going to see in a second that there is a batch effect. But let me start uh, by showing you the tissue type. Uh, there it is. Okay. So here we, here we have the dendrogram, and we can see the hippocampus all together. Cerebellums are all together. The colons are all together. The kidneys are all together. Um, now, we have some kidneys here, and we have um, some kidneys over here and here and here so there looks there looks like there's a little bit more variability than we want to see and I think that's because there's different studies being used that's in the third column of the table uh, with the annotation so there are the studies and now you can see if that's the case right so now you can see that there's different um, studies these livers are from a different study than the, these livers over here Okay, now what else can we do very quickly here? Um, let's say we wanted to um, actually get clusters. We can use the function cut tree and, oops, sorry, I think it's just one T. Nope, there's not, um, that's not, right? Let's see, okay. Yeah, sorry, it is cut tree without, with one T, but we have to tell it how many um, classes we want or what height we want, so where do we want to cut it? So let's say we want to cut it at like 100 or at 50 or at 150 
um, they can try a hundred. So then we can say cut tree age, and then height equals a hundred. And now you can see it's been it's classified each sample into a uh, cluster, cluster one, cluster two. You can see how many clusters were made. Yeah, so there's ten of one. Anyways, that, you can work with that on your um, on your own. Uh, you can also specify the number of clusters you want. Okay. Next thing we can do, we're going to do, this is again the same thing, we're going to compute the distance. We already did that, but might as well, uh, actually we're going to do it for all the samples now, because we're going to make an MDS plot, which is a little bit easier to look at a lot of the samples than it is for the hierarchical cluster. So we're going to make, we're going to compute the distance of all the columns, all the samples. I'll do that here, it takes a little bit longer, but not too much. Still running, now it's done, okay. so. Now we can make an MDS uh, calculation here, the function CMDS scale. So that stands for classical multiple dimensional scale plot. We also send it a distance that's already been pre-computed and that's pretty fast. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create uh, numbers which, we, which are going to be equivalent to the colors, um, to the tissue types, right? So we, we turn tissues into a factor and then we can turn it into numbers. Um, then it'll it'll turn them into numbers, and we can use those numbers to denote different colors. So there it is. So now we have color, colors as a factor, and here we're going to turn it into a number. So I'm just going to show you what that does. So if you do as numeric as factor tissue, you get numbers back, and there um, every tissue gets a different number, and now it's a different color. So that's going to make the plot, and then you can see. The different tissues. You see, there's tissue, black tissue, the blue tissue, the red tissue, etc. So now, how do we know which tissue is which? We can use legend. The legend command is pretty useful, and we're gonna put the legend at the top left corner. So we wanted to put it up here. We could also use top right or bottom right or bottom left, or we can give it coordinates and put it in a specific place. So the second argument is the levels um, the levels of colors is going to be the tissue num names let me just show you that because color is now a factor so there they are so that's going to be the, the characters appearing in the, in the legend and then the colors that go with each one I'm going to use this function sequence along the levels so that this one gets the one this one gets the two this one gets the three so um, we see what colors they are okay let's see what that does there it is. It's a little small, um, but let me see if I can just make it a little bigger. And you can see cerebellums. These are the cerebellums. These are the hippocampus. Here are the columns way down here. The kidneys. The, um, uh, the kidneys. Uh, what else? We have the placenta. They're yellow, etc. So you can see that it's 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 clustering by tissue pretty well. Anyway, so these are the kinds of things. That you can do very easily with R. Uh, you can make these pictures much prettier than we've done here. This is just a simple example. All right, that's it for today.